So our videos on hypermiling and improving your driving technique to get better gas consumption have been quite popular and we have touched on mods that you can do to your car but this video we're just going to look at mods and upgrades that you can do to your car to improve your fuel consumption and get more miles out of each tank of fuel and we're going to look at some of the methods that manufacturers have employed over the years to make sure that their cars continue to meet emissions regulations and achieve the economy figures that people expect from them. At the end of the video we're going to flag up some of the more wacky, unusual or dubious methods including some of the snake oils out there that people suggest you add to your fuel in order to improve fuel economy and discuss whether it's worth doing these things. But for now we're just going to look at the simple mods and upgrades that you can do to your car from aerodynamic enhancements to electronic changes within the ECU and practical bolt-on mods that can make a significant difference to your car's fuel consumption. So we've spoken at length about hypermiling and driving techniques that make your car more economical. But let's look now at some of the mods that you can do to your car to make it more economical. And one of the biggest things is remapping it. The ECU controls the way the engine works, the way it burns fuel, the timing, the amount of fuel that's dumped in. If it's got a turbo, it may also affect the way the turbo pushes air into the engine. So by altering the ECU, you can encourage it to run more efficiently to get more power out of every drop of fuel that you're using. So most remapping companies and most remaps that you can buy have an option for an economy mode. Now there's a bit of an anomaly with diesel engines, they do tend to produce more power and more fuel economy, whereas most gasoline or petrol engine cars will either give you good extra power or they will give you better fuel economy. It's very rare in most instances to actually get both, but there are some exceptions. Let me know in the comments how you found remapping your car and how that's affected your fuel economy. But thinking also about other mechanical mods that you can do to your car, fitting smaller, narrower tires will reduce the rolling resistance. It'll stuff your performance, but you will get better gas mileage. So short of putting pram wheels on the car, there's usually a, a big choice of different rim sizes that will allow you to use slightly narrower tires on it. So tire pressures also certainly come into it. So it's not so much a mod, it's more of a maintenance thing, but just making sure your tire pressures are in the upper range that the manufacturer specifies. Some hypermilers recommend overinflating tires, but that's dangerous. Um, instead of having a nice flat contact patch with the road, the tire tends to bead and you've really restricted the contact patch. So you've reduced the car's handling significantly and its grip, which is positively dangerous. So some things are just not worth doing in order to get more fuel economy out. Any other mods that will make the engine more efficient will improve your fuel economy. So things like camshaft profiles, porting the head, they're usually done to encourage the engine to burn more fuel. But if the manufacturer of your vehicle has not really paid much attention to the design, it's probably an inefficient design and it can be improved upon. So getting those serious mechanical mods done to your car can give you a few extra MPGs, but you do have to weigh up whether the cost of having this work done is going to be recouped in the cost of fuel that you're going to save over the years that you own the car. And in a lot of cases, that's not really going to apply. So we really need to think about practical mods that we can do to a car to make it use less fuel. So weight reduction is another essentially free mod that we can do, taking parts out of the car that aren't needed or replacing parts with lighter parts. So the obvious areas are the alloy wheels. If you've got lighter alloy wheels, you can make a fairly substantial weight saving. Think about the tyres as well. Some heavy grade tyres can weigh a lot more than the less heavy duty tyres that you can buy. For example, commercial vehicle tyres have extra steel in the ply to make them stronger and more resilient. So as a result of that, those tyres will also be heavier. Some people have gone to the extreme of taking out the car interior, removing, for example, the rear seats. How far you go depends a lot on the laws in your country. For example, in some areas, you've got to retain the safety features. So in a lot of cases, that would require the airbags that are inserted in 
in the dashboard and even the padding that the dashboard provides you would have to keep in place. Thinking also about mechanical mods that make the car lighter, replacing body panels with lighter parts. So carbon fiber bonnets and wings and even fiberglass in some cases can be a lot lighter than the steel components that manufacturers use. But again, in some areas, it's not legal to do that. You need to be careful on the construction and use regulations and just make sure that the car will still pass its crash testing requirements for the area that you live in. So that may mean that you fit parts that have actually been properly tested and approved for road use. So small favor to ask, please just boot that like button and subscribe to the channel and please comment. It really does help us to get out there. YouTube algorithm loves to see videos that people have engaged with and commented on. So using a different grade of fuel can also make the car more economical. It depends a lot on the engine and how it's been set up. But making sure that the ECU is set up to use the grade of fuel you're using can actually allow you to extract more energy from that fuel. And as a result, you will get more miles. We often say that warmer air carries less oxygen. So if you suck warm air into the engine, it will use less fuel because there's less oxygen available. Now, on the surface of it, that sounds like a, a good strategy to reducing the car's use of fuel. But in reality, what you're doing is decreasing the efficiency of the engine. So if it's getting less oxygen and it's burning less fuel, the engine is working less efficiently. So in some cases, although the engine is using less fuel, you're extracting even less power from that proportion of fuel. So it can make the car less efficient. Some of the old school techniques that people used to do on the old cars that had the old classic radiators was blanking off a part of the radiator to make the engine run warmer. Now on modern engines, that really doesn't apply. There's so much involved electronically in the engine and just maintaining that regulated engine temperature for efficiency. So manufacturers have already done a lot to make the engines as efficient as possible. We've also had um, major innovations like direct fuel injection, allowing manufacturers to use really high compression ratios. So in some cases, by increasing the compression ratio of your engine, you can increase its efficiency, but you've got problems there with pre-ignition or knock, and that can present a whole slew of other problems. So you need to think very carefully about that strategy, whether you're just doing that for more fuel economy or for more power. And if you need to make other adjustments to the engine to allow it to run those higher compression ratios. So other techniques that manufacturers have used is um, different cam profiles like the VTEC system. So you've got an economical cam at low RPMs and then it switches to a more sporty road cam. So that would highlight that the cam does have a bearing on the engine's efficiency and the way it actually runs. And also some manufacturers have started using cylinder on demand. So if you've got a four cylinder engine and you're cruising not particularly under load at fairly low RPMs, two of the cylinders will shut off. So if you've got a 1400 cc car, for some of the time, it'll only be 700 cc. So it'll be working very efficiently just to maintain those road speeds. Any mods that reduce the mechanical drain on the engine are good because the engine can work more efficiently. So using the air conditioning really does sap your fuel. By the time the engine has driven the air conditioning unit, it's really reduced the efficiency of the engine and you're seriously down on power. So maybe remove the air conditioning altogether so you're not tempted to use it or just don't use it. But think also about the efficiency of the alternator, the water pump, the oil pump, which are all often mechanically connected to the crank. If you can improve the efficiency of those items, you lower the drag on the crank and improve the efficiency of the engine. A big area that a lot of people focus on is aerodynamic mods. So vortex generators, they're the little triangles that go across the top of the rear of the roof of the car. Um, they encourage the air to stay in contact with the car and direct it towards the spoiler where it can reduce drag at the back of the car. So in terms of aero mods, vortex generators are probably one of the best mods you can do for fuel economy. You certainly don't want to be able wings because they give you downforce and create a lot more drag. I've got a video on aerodynamics on cars so you can get a feel for the nuances and the subtleties of adding aero enhancements to your car. We've not really got time to go into the subject in great detail but basically an engine will suffer from detonation, knock, pre-ignition, whatever you want to call it, whatever the circumstances. If the engine is not running as efficiently as possible, if the fuel mix is wrong, if the engine is perhaps too hot, there's hot spots in it. There's so many things that can cause pre-ignition. Water injection limits the burn rate of the initial combustion process and can give you quite a bit more leeway to resist knock. So adding a water injection kit is a way of improving the fuel economy, but it's a very complex subject. You really do need someone who knows what they're doing and understands how the engine has been set up and is working and whether you're getting that problem with pre-ignition or knock in the first place. So one of our members has actually been experimenting with an ionizer on the air intake. 
So the ionizer creates ionized airflow into the engine. It, it splits the molecules of air and ionizes them and adds ions to them. And it's a, a complex nerdy thing. So I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to dig a big hole for myself if I try to describe ions and that sort of thing. Um, but his results have actually been quite encouraging. He notes better fuel economy when he has the ionizer switched on and fitted. Um, I've not tried it. I've, I'm curious as to whether this is going to be a mod that is going to enhance the fuel economy of all cars or whether it just works particularly on certain cars and depends on the way they're set up. So if I get more information on ionizers on the air intake, I'll certainly be dropping a video on that and give you my unbiased findings. But at the moment, it's a concept I've heard about. I've heard good things. I've also heard bad things from some people who've tried it on other types of engines. So for me, the jury is out as far as ionization goes, but I'm sure there are some merits in it. Anything that can encourage the engine to burn more efficiently has got to be good. There's so many scams around as well when it comes to fuel injection. We've had um, HHO hydrogen molecules coming out of water through an electrolytic process and the car's meant to burn the hydrogen and it's meant to make the car more economical and people have made a fortune selling kits but I've not seen anyone selling parts commercially. So I, I have to wonder whether there is any merits at all to the whole HHO hydrogen from water intake setups that people are selling and recommending. There's, there was a great big frenzy about these, lots of conspiracy theories that the oil, oil companies were trying to prevent people from putting these things together. Um, but please let me know in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing people's opinions and findings and reading studies and tests that have been done on these very different systems and mechanisms. And if I find that I've maybe misunderstood or I've been misinformed, I'll certainly pass on the information I get to all of you lovely viewers. So we've also seen fuel magnets, so they really don't work. Having a fuel magnet and letting the fuel pass over it, it does very little to your actual fuel economy. And there's a whole slew of additives that you can chuck in your fuel tank that claim to improve fuel economy. The only ones I've actually used and seen a benefit were things like the BG44K and the BG244, which raise the octane slightly of the petrol or the diesel that you're using or the cetane of the diesel, I should say but the most important thing they do is clean the injectors, clean the sparks, it keeps the engine clean. So anything that helps clean the engine has got to improve its efficiency, but if you've got a clean engine, you can't really improve upon that. So a lot of these additives that you buy that claim to increase the octane of fuel, they're actually quite expensive. If you factor that out per tank, you are probably adding another 10, 15, 20% to the cost of your fuel tank with a view to getting a bit more fuel economy. So if you actually do the maths and and work it out and sit down at home and do the calculations, you usually realize that the extra cost of these snake oils and substances and liquids that you add to your fuel tank are really not worth doing. Please let me know in the comments if you found a particular additive that's worked well for you. And I'll certainly look to try that in my car and I'll pass on my unbiased findings and run some tests and just see if it really does improve my gas mileage. So let me know what your thoughts are on fuel saving mods. If you've done any mods to your car and found them effective, or if you perhaps wasted money on mods or upgrades and just really want to flag up to other people that they should really avoid these things. So I really hope this video has just flagged up some ideas that you can investigate and run with for your particular car and help you to get a little bit more fuel economy out of it. Please drop us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And don't forget to stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.